In today's video, we're going to be comparing and contrasting uh, different forms of work holding using the three jaw chuck, four jaw chuck, and my new Bison 5C collet chuck. G'day everyone and uh, welcome back to my little home machine shop. Um, you may remember my previous video titled uh, Mail Call. Um, I was donated a 5C a Bison 5C collet chuck from my good buddy Paul Frink over at Cape Cod CNC. Um, recently there was a sale on here in Australia by one of the machinery and tool companies and I bought myself a set of 5C collet chucks. Now they roughly cost me I think about $227 from memory and uh, they were shipped pretty much straight away with a few hiccups along the way, but we won't go into that. So uh, I thought today'd be a really good video um, where I could just uh, demonstrate each chuck and its performance. Now, um, the test piece I'll be using today is a piece of 12 millimeter bright mild steel. Now, in, re and, uh, in reflection, I probably should have been using some silver steel, which has been centerless ground and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's concentricity is, is fantastic. But look, this little bright mild stuff is pretty good. Um, keep in mind, it, even though you order 12 mil with bright mild, it comes out at about 11.94, uh, but that is consistent along its length. And the piece I had was left over from a job and it was only about 200 millimeters long. Okay, so first of all today, um, to get this shell on the road, I removed the chuck uh, from the Colchester lathe and I wanted to actually check my spindle run out. Now, keep in mind this old Colchester, she's an old girl. I would say, look, I'm, guess, I'm guesstimating here. Um, it's an imperial machine. Uh, Australia went metric back in 72, 73. So I wouldn't mind betting this machine was installed into a, a Western Suburbs Melbourne High School, a technical training school, back in the early 70s. So I would say it's at least between 40 and 40 to 45, maybe 50 years old. It's, um, I, I really need to check the serial number and get some facts on that. But look, let's, uh, you know, for the sake of arguments, let's just say it's a 40 year old machine. And I was quite blown away by the spindle run out. It was, um, as you can see here in the video, I clocked it up on the face and clocked it up on the taper. Um, and this thing is sweet as, and uh, it's, I don't think it's had a lot of work, even though there was some damage to the lathe, to the, to the, cro um, to the cross slide and to the three jaw chuck, um, the spindle nose is really, really good. So I'm thinking it might have been an instructor's machine and the kids really didn't get much use on it. Anyway, so let's go with uh, test number one. So for test number one, I'm going to be using my um, Pratt Bernard three jaw chuck. Um, now these things are really good. These are th these are actually made in England back in the day, and they're high speed rated. I believe the three jaw is high speed rated for up to uh, two thousand or three thousand RPM, but the four jaw isn't. Okay, and these came with the machine, and uh, they were in quite some disarray when I got them, and and that's to be expected. The, th the three jaw chuck, when I placed the the steel in there and clocked it up, I was getting about. Uh, one, 0 0.13 uh, millimeters of run out. Now to check, uh, what I'm looking for today is repeatability. So after I machine the end of the piece down to 11 millimeters, I wanna take it out of the chuck, just put it back in and clock it back up again and just check that run out, okay? Um, now, as you know, you can have run out when you install it. You, you'll, when you store your test bar, you can machine it and of course the run out will be gone. However, when you take the bar out and reinsert it back into the chuck, if you don't correctly align it back with the jaws, back in the same spot, well, one, as one could imagine, you will have uh, that run out, okay, what you had when you originally started. Now, could I get around this? Yes, I could. Um, I could actually um, install a ring on my three door chuck and uh, center grind the jaws, so grind them. Uh, however, when you grind your jaws, keep in mind too that even though that works at that set diameter, uh, it's really hard to say if it's gonna work throughout the diameter range. And that's because there could be intermittent wear in your three jaw chuck, especially if it was used all the time on a, on a standard size bar. So it's gonna be worn in one section more than the other. So there's pros and cons to grinding your jaws, okay? Uh, usually you get away with it and you get a really good uh, outcome from it. 
Alrighty, so step three, I'm going to put on the four jaw chuck and I'm going to use my square ER32 collet block for this. And so I want to give you a little bit of a, an idea between using the Bison 5C and using the ER32 collet block in here. Now there's pros and cons to both. Now, uh, obviously the cheaper alternative is to do the four jaw method with the uh, square collet block. However, your ER32 collet will really only get you up to about 21 millimeter diameter. Uh, with the 5C collet, I can go all the way up to 28, but that's not with a through hole. Uh, in the collet, it's actually a step in there, all right? Um, so it's a lot cheaper option to use the four jaw, and, but it's a pain in the backside because you've got to clock it in. And you can see here I've clocked it in and I'm getting uh, practically uh, no run out here and I'll take a cut now. Once again, I'll machine that bar stock down to 11 millimeters. Then I'll take it out of the um, ER32 collet block, undo the collet, uh, pull it out, reinsert it and check its concentricity and just see where we're at and I'll be testing it on the machine surface, okay? Now when I did that, you can see I'm getting a 0 0.06 millimeter of run out, which is, now this could be a viable option if you don't want to spend the money on the collet chuck and the collets. Um, as I was saying, I was very lucky. My um, 5C collet chuck was donated to me by Paul and that saved me lots of money. I've looked around on the internet, they're anywhere between 600 and over $1,000 just for the, for the Bison brand. Um, but anyway, um, I picked up the shipping and yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So thank you, Paul. So let's put on the Bison 5C collet chuck now and let's just check the run out on that. You can see here that I'm getting zero on the face of the collet chuck. However, on the tapered uh, jaw, where the jaw pulls up against, I'm getting a 0 0.02 millimeter run out. Okay, which is bugger all. Um, all right, let's insert the rod and let's uh, clock it in and check it out. And as you can see, when I put the rod in, um, I'm getting the same run out, so 0 0.02, which is really, really good. So let's machine this rod down to 11 millimeters. And what I'm gonna do for this one, for re repeatability, I'm actually gonna machine it down to 11 millimeters on the money. And then I'm gonna insert an 11 millimeter 5C collet chuck and clamp onto that machine surface and then clock it in and just see what it is. Now for this experiment, I was blown away because I was actually getting exactly what I had when I first did it, so 0 0.02 of a millimeter. So those results, I'm really, really happy. But keep in mind that when you um, hold onto a machine surface with your collet chuck, you can uh, run the risk of marring the part or you know scratching the part because it's, um, it's a nice uh, transition fit in there, okay? Uh, collets are nothing new. Collets have been around, uh, you know, since the old capstan and turret lays, you know, back in the day. Um, however, what's changed is the systems of work holding. So, you know, they've all changed standards. So obviously 5C is one of those standards. But yeah, collets have been used way back. And uh, I, I saw that because I checked up in my old textbooks that I had from uh, high school. Alrighty, and as you know, all different systems, ISO, CAT, uh, you know, 5C, you know, BT30, you know, ISO 30, they all change, R8. So there's all different systems, all right? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's video. And uh, I tell you what, I was really, really impressed with the collet chuck results. And uh, I think going or moving on from here, I'm gonna be a little bit lazier. I'm gonna leave that collet chuck on. I think I can nearly do all my machining uh, within the range. And only if I need to go over uh, 28 millimeters, I could then put my three jaw chuck back on to hold bigger pieces. However, in saying that, you can also buy a little uh, smaller three jaw chuck with a 5C on it that you can put into your 5C collet chuck as well, just to get some of those other sizes. So that could be a possibility in the future. I noticed Mc, uh, McMaster Car sell one of those parts. <laughs>